tell us a bit more about this. I mean, we're seeing a string of these healthcare IPOs. What's really driving this healthcare craze? Hey, good morning, Ivan. Uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, hope everyone's doing great in Hong Kong. I think uh, right now for healthcare, so um, I think right now for healthcare sector, it's very booming, very, you know, attract a lot of capital from worldwide. So look at the overall healthcare sector, you know, they show the resilience under the current distressed situation. You know, we have seen a lot of healthcare companies performing very well on the current global COVID-19 situation. So I have a few data to compare with you, share with you. By the end of May, the year to date, you know, New York Stock Exchange Index Healthcare Index only down 2% uh, compared with almost 20% of the overall index composite. And Hong Kong, you know, you look at Hong Kong index, you know, also up to healthcare up to 10% against minus 10% of the M yeah. MSCI index. So the thing is, is that, you know, healthcare, you know, is al always very resilient. A uh, very defensive, you know, sector, uh, particularly for uh, uh, economic downturn uh, cycle. This is our observation. And what are you seeing? What are you seeing in terms of the acceptance of domestically produced medical products now? Why are we seeing this? With this perhaps outperformance, and how are they actually encroaching on some of these established players and multinational companies out there right now? Uh, you know, uh, so basically, I take a country for, uh, for for instance. You know, I can share a very good story with you. So basically, you know, you look at current, you know, uh, locking down of each country may slow down the growth and create uncertainty for a company with global angle. Uh, particularly, if they've been a global logistics industry is facing a lot of the headwind under the current situation. However, you know, for a company like Kangji, uh, will not be impacted. So that, you know, the international sales for Kangji or other medical device companies, they focus on China uh, healthcare market. For Kangji, they only have 5% of company revenue generated from overseas markets. And the whole, whole supply chain of Kangji uh, is based in China. So that, that means, you know, the overall top line growth, the whole supply chain were not impacted by global uh, environment. Uh, the solid you know, market demand of China market and, you know, and the current status of COVID-19 controlling in China will enhance you know, investors' co confidence in metal device like Kangji's long-term growth. Uh, James, is Kangji looking to try to profit from COVID-19 in terms of diagnostics or treatments? Is that an area it's looking to build out a pipeline? You know, Kangji is uh, um, is a uh, number one, also the leading position in uh, medical device. Uh, uh, Kangji is um, a market leader position in uh, minimal invasive surgical device sector. So, uh, you know, for it, it's uh, like a, a knee surgery, uh, less invasive, uh, less trauma, or less scarring, a shorter, you know, hospital stay that traditional open surgery, that is the focus of Kangji. Uh, Kangji has been established its uh, leading position uh, in the past years. Uh, meanwhile, you know, this market is uh, very sizable with, with very fast growth potential. So I would say Kangji uh, previously and the future will keep in, um, make a very solid position in minimal investment sector uh, and be um, uh, continue to be number one uh, among all the domestic players.